This, no doubt, this move by Judge Cannon to hold this oral argument and have outside experts even participate in the oral argument on whether or not Jack Smith was legally appointed, uh, it's going to add more fuel to the fire of those on the left that are saying she's she's 100% biased for Donald Trump. She's going to just throw the case. She's delaying it for him because she's doing all these unprecedented measures. But I look at it the other way. This is an unprecedented case. This is a special counsel going after a former president. I'm actually really glad she is taking this much care and time to look into these issues and figure them out to make sure that she doesn't set horrible precedent for every single former president in the future. I don't know if it's the first time we're going to have oral argument on it. It has been challenged before and recently as well. Hunter Biden's attorneys tried uh, this uh, as well uh, with uh, judges in Los Angeles and Delaware, so both Democrats and Republicans in high-profile matters, which is usually when you get a special counsel appointed. Uh, Paul Manafort's uh, legal team tried this uh, to challenge Robert Mueller's authority. That did not go uh, uh, anywhere. Uh, and uh, Andrew Miller, who was associated with Roger Stone, uh, lost a challenge to Mueller's authority as well. That doesn't mean that uh, Judge Cannon can't consider the, this argument, though. And obviously, you have serious attorneys on both sides of the aisle who have uh, uh, and do believe that these uh, special counsel appointments are uh, uh, Ill- are not lawful. And that's because one of the main issues, I'll go to Harry Hutchinson on this, is that, that Harry, you've got an entire Department of Justice full of officers of the United States. So we talk about officers of the United States and uh, with the 14th Amendment case, but this is separate. We're talking about confirmed, they go up for Senate confirmation. They're not the most necessarily high-profile confirmations most of the time, nor should they be that controversial. Um, and occasionally you get, but so they're confirmed to take on their jobs, to lead prosecutions, really to direct their deputies uh, to decide what cases we are and they're not going to uh, pursue when it comes to uh, criminal matters. And you've got a whole civil division as well. But then you have this whole world of special counsels that a, a an attorney general can appoint uh, when they believe the Department of Justice is not best suited internally, so for for really reasons of, I mean, it's I, I think it's just reasons of actually optics. Uh, they they appoint someone a special counsel, and they act like they have this authority to do whatever they need to do outside of the Attorney General. What we do know is that's actually not true. They could be hired and fired by an Attorney General at any time, uh, and that means that a President of the United States can hire them and fire them. That doesn't mean there couldn't be congressional ramifications remember congress talked about that with Mueller. like well if the attorney general decided to get rid of Mueller, we you know you're impeaching the president of the united states or impeaching the attorney general even though these by by the federal rule itself and the rule making they're clearly appointed by the attorney general not for uh indefinitely kick one uh, forever but uh, these challenges have been unsuccessful in the past and we have uh, we we have criticized at the aclj the use of special counsels when we, when we believe it's just unnecessary when you've got an entire Department of Justice, what are you afraid of having your U.S. attorneys handle this? Absolutely. So if a U.S. attorney was handling the Mar-a-Lago case, the classified documents case in Florida, uh, there would be no legal question with respect to his authority. Uh, in this particular case, Jack Smith was hired Uh, or appointed by Attorney General Merritt Garland. And if he is presumed to be a principal officer um, of the United States, he must indeed be nominated first by the President of the United States and confirmed by the Senate. That did not occur. So the argument that the Trump uh, defendants are making is that Jack Smith has no viable authority. Indeed, the United States Supreme Court, at least in the person of Clarence uh, Thomas, has raised a question as to whether or not these so-called special counsels um, are viable within the meaning of the United States Constitution. And so I think at the end of the day, this will be an important hearing And it will indeed be a lengthy hearing. Why? Because Judge Cannon is going to hear from so many lawyers on both sides of this particular uh, question. 
And so I think this is a very, very important issue. I hope that at that this issue ultimately winds up before the United States Supreme Court so we can decide this question once and for all. Yeah, I mean, this is not, it's not the usual criminal practice to have kind of like side parties come in, but they, the, the, the defendant here in the case, Donald Trump, agreed to it as well so that it was kind of the, the judge saying, look, I, we don't normally do this, but so first I'm the defendant – has the constitutional rights? Do you want this, you know, even presented? Okay, you want these other other individuals to present it. So that's unusual, but it can be done. I mean, that's all you can say is it's unusual. Any other attack is just an attack on the judge herself. If you don't like the idea that she's even considering it, by the way, we don't even know how she's going to to, to ultimately uh, come down on this. She might not be convinced one way or the other. What I think is probably pretty clear, Harry, though, that's it's being set up is exactly what you just said, which is. This is a, a trial where we, we can almost guarantee, unless she just says no and kind of goes with the past, that if she takes a position that it's unlawful, it's certainly going to be heard by the 11th Circuit. And then if the 11th Circuit issues an opinion that maybe is similar to hers, I think it's certainly going to be heard by the Supreme Court. It might take two, two, it might take two levels for the Supreme Court to get there, but... The other, the other times it was challenged, it was thrown out so quickly, there was no way to really, to, it wasn't like an appealable issue. I mean, it was, it was just like, no, and they just moved on. I think that is precisely correct. Uh, ultimately, though, I think it's important to note and for listeners to note is that all of these issues are delaying the trial. So I think at the end of the day, however the judge rules, more likely than not, we will not see a trial in the classified documents case uh, probably until the end of this year, perhaps going into uh, next year, because there are many other unresolved issues that she has to uh, look at. Um, this is a high-profile case. It's important to keep in mind that Robert Herr, who was appointed a special counsel to look into the Joe Biden uh, classified documents case, uh, he was also in a similar position. Um, and so one of the issues that's out there, at least from the perspective of a law professor, is you could challenge the legitimacy of his decision making um, and virtually all special counsels going forward. Uh, so I think this is a very important issue, and I think the judge is wise to uh, listen to uh, outside parties on both sides of the, the argument. But it's also impor important to keep in mind that many of the individuals who are claiming that this particular special counsel, Jack Smith, uh, was legally appointed are simply uh, – individuals who have been victimized by the Trump derangement syndrome. I also think it raises a broader issue with the way our government operates. And this is something that we at the ACLJ have pushed back against for decades. And that is the rulemaking process and the regulatory process within bureaucracies as opposed to legislation by Congress. So the special counsel office and authorities come out of the Code of Federal Regulations, which is the rulemaking process. And they rely on a part of the U.S. code, which would be legislative, that allows the attorney general to delegate some of his authority. That specifically says to any other officer, employee, or agency of the Department of Justice. But the interpretation of the law by the, the bureaucracy takes it much further. And actually, it raises questions of whether people like John Durham or Weiss, the, the special counsel that is prosecuting Hunter Biden, are actually within the rules allowed to be special counsels because the the provision says it needs to be someone outside of government, which automatically sounds like it sets up a constitutional issue on whether the regulations are relying on U.S. code to say it has to be someone who is not a part of the government. And yet we also have two special counsels that have been a part of the government in recent history. Do you think that this uh, shows, one, the the terrible nature of the rulemaking process that we're struggle with when we have bureaucracies making this, but also it gives a lot of holes that uh, a higher court could poke. I think that's precisely correct. And so it's a wonderful issue for uh, appellate courts. It's a wonderful issue for the United States Supreme Court. It's a wonderful issue for law professors. So 
at, at the end of the day, however, the bottom line is you are absolutely correct, Will, that the rules were imperfectly drafted and there are gaps, uh, and lawyers like to use fancy words like lacuna, uh, to indicate that there are gaps in the rules and regulations, and this needs to be filled in by the court. So ultimately, this case should result in a United States Supreme Court hearing and decision-making to clarify this particular issue. All right, folks, we're going to follow this very closely. I want to remind you as well, we're preparing to file a critical brief in Georgia. That's at the Georgia Court of Appeals uh, looking to disqualify uh, uh, Fannie Willis from her corrupt prosecution of President Trump like her chosen special counsel was disqualified as well. We're prepared to file the New York appeal of President Trump's uh, conviction to defend the Constitution. But it's not just about President Trump. It's about defending all of our constitutional rights in this constitutional republic and to save our country from this new weaponization of law. We call it lawfare. Please take action with us by signing on to our brief to remove DA Fonny Willis and defend the integrity of the justice system. That's at aclj.org slash sign.